All right, folks. Well, I thought we'd do a quick part two uh, from the uh, trip that from Oregon to Utah, and now we're actually on our way back from Utah back to Oregon. We do have the high top on here. Uh, I thought I'd address some of the questions that some of you guys had in the comments, and also we'd kind of talk about some of the uh, experiences that we were having now driving the van with the high top on as far as what kind of mileage we're still maintaining and just how the van handles with the high top. Train trestle there, and you can see it goes into the hillside. stopped here in Elko to grab something to eat. Now one of the questions people were asking was where our EGT sensor is located and you can see it right there going in the exhaust manifold. Now we had this actually installed by the diesel shop that we had all the problems with and looking at this now and seeing the information we saw on, that I watched on Ed, the Edge Tuners YouTube channel, I kind of almost feel like this is a little bit far forward. It is before the turbo, it's in the manifold before the up pipes, but it kind of seems to me like it actually should be a little bit farther forward up that way. So I'm not really sure about that. If you have, uh, you know, if you have a thought about this, leave that down in the comments. All right, so we're back on the road. So on this trip headed back, instead of going through Idaho, the way we came to Utah, we're actually running through Nevada and then back into Oregon. Most, of, for those that aren't familiar, uh, in Idaho, Utah, and Nevada, the speed limits on the highway often are 80 miles an hour. So we're running about 70. 70 is about as fast as I want to be able to run with the van. It seems that we can kind of maintain and be able to keep the EGTs uh, at a level where, I'm, where we're comfortable. Right now, uh, we're running fairly flat. So I'm running 1800 RPMs in fourth gear. And we're about three, kind of balanced between three and four on the boost. And we're anywhere between 35 and 45 on the load. And then that keeps our EGTs somewhere between like 800 and 1,000, depending on if we're kind of gradually rising or gra gradually dropping. Now, if we do get to a bit of a more of a pass, I will drop it down to about 60 miles per hour and I'll turn the overdrive off and that gets our RPMs up to about 2100 and I'll maintain about 60 and then that still keeps our EGTs in that kind of 900 ballpark. Stopped at a rest stop. Um, I'm sitting in the van. I'm gonna let Megan go run in, go to the bathroom. One of the things that another person brought up in the comments is making sure to let the van idle for a little bit before shutting it off so that the EG keys can uh, cool down a little bit. That is a practice that Megan and I have followed even in her old van uh, that wasn't tuned. Uh, it's always a good idea to just kind of let it idle a little bit. We usually let it get down below 400 before I uh, shut the van off if uh, we are going to stop somewhere for any amount of time. In this particular case, I'm just going to let Megan go to the bathroom and then uh, I'll jump out and go to the bathroom. <sighs> Much better. Megan is filling up gas. We're in a little border town called McDermott uh, where we're filling up gas. But for those that don't really know this, just a probably a half mile or so that way will be in Oregon. And in Oregon, you are not allowed to pump your own gas. You have to wait for the attendant, which a lot of people that are from out of state don't understand. Being a long time ago Washington native, uh, I also find frustration in having to wait for somebody to pump my gas. I wish uh, we could uh, pump our own gas. 
All right, so why Megan's also pumping the gas, another thing I do want to point out that uh, someone brought up is the fact that because Megan has 35 inch tires on her van, uh, our odometer won't be correct. So the calculations we made in the last video were slightly off. Uh, for every one mile we go, the odometer actually only reads nine tenths of a mile. So we actually needed to add another tenth of a mile, which actually makes it so we got better gas mileage than, than we stated. We probably actually get closer to 16 miles per gallon. So another question that we've had on the, uh, or another point people have made on the comments is that we should add an intercooler to the van. Now the van didn't come with an intercooler stock and from what I can see on the internet there's nothing out there that you can buy over the counter or out of the box that will work and just uh, you know hook up to the van. So whatever you did build you would have to kind of piece together out of parts and what I have found on the forums that's what some guys have done. have managed to like cobble together out of uh, parts from other vehicles and fabrication uh, been able to do that. I also did see that U-Joint has done a intercooler on some vans as well. I'm assuming that is something that they did and put together in-house. So this might be something we might want to approach Dirt Road Garage uh, about over time and see if it's something that they could put together as some form of intercooler for the van. So babe, do you notice any difference in how the van is handling? with the high top now? If there is a difference, it's so small, I just don't even notice it. After driving it for 13 hours the other day, I didn't notice uh, when I was driving it today that there was a big difference. There was a, a short period where we got some uh, wind across the highway as we went through Winnemucca, but still I didn't think that the van was unwieldy in any way. I thought, I was kind of thinking that with the bigger top that it was really going to feel like a sail, but I didn't, I didn't feel that at all as I drove it. Well, we've made it back to Oregon and uh, we just stopped at the truck scales here real quick. It looks like it's reading 80-50. It was kind of bouncing between 80-50 and 80-100. So kind of based on, we don't know exactly how much fuel we had when we weighed ourselves the last time and, how, and we know how much fuel we have now, which is just under a quarter tank. We feel like it didn't really add that much weight to add the uh, high top. One thing to consider is they had to cut the roof out, so we actually lost weight as well. They did say that the high top was roughly about 190 pounds, and then it was a little over 100 pounds of weight that we would that would be cut out of the roof. So not too bad. And gas mileage kind of stayed somewhat a uh, down just a little bit. We're we're running just about 15 miles per gallon now, whereas we figured out with uh, adjusting for the tires that we were maybe running 16 miles per gallon before. So um, a little bit of loss there, but not too bad. And, uh, but you know, so much gain with the head headroom that it'll be really nice. Anyways, guys, we're gonna wrap up the video. Hope you guys found some more information in this that was useful. If you did, please uh, give it a like. If you have any more comments or questions, leave those down below and uh, we'll catch you guys again. Outside. Outside.